Hello? Ah, OK. So good morning. Uh, thank you so much for waiting so much time. Um, well, um, we are happy to be here um, to, to share our work with you. Um, this is um, vulnerability and exploitation. We name it as ghost telephonist. It's about a problem in cs 4 back in the LTE network. So let me firstly oh, give a brief uh, self-introduction. OK, we, we come from the 360 technology. Um, 360 is a leading internet security company in China. And like my coffee and Symantec. And our core products are antivirus security software for uh, personal computers and uh, cell phones. Um, for us, we come from the Unicorn team. This team is um, one research group in 360, and this team was built in 2014. We focus on the security issues in many kinds of wireless systems, wireless telecommunication systems. And our previous works include uh, like uh, GPS spoofing in DEF CON 23, the year before last year, okay? And LTE redirection attack in DEF CON 24. And also the PLC attack in Black Hat in last year. So in this year, we bring the work about uh, the vulnerability in 4G LTE uh, in the cs 4 back procedure. Okay, so what is cs 4 back um, Now let me briefly introduce the voice solutions in LTE network. As we all know, um, different from the 2G and 3G, in LTE network, the circuit switch was removed, and only packet switch is left. So now there are mainly three solutions for voice in LTE. The first one is VOLTE, VOLT, voice over IP. This is the, the final objective for the network evolution. And the second solution is um, the case we discussed today. CS for back, circuit switched for back. It means when, um, when subscriber takes voice core, the cell phone has to switch from the 4G to 2G or 3G. The third solution is simultaneous voice and LTE. The cell phone keeps two con connections simultaneously. One is in 4G and the other is in 3G or 2G. This solution has higher price and more rapid power consumption on the terminal because it has two baseband chipsets running. Um, at the beginning of this year, we were working on a project about the well-known GSM man in the middle attack and were debugging some modifications on Osmocom BB. This is a very uh, famous project for GSM protocol. We tried to send a fake paging response and then we were surprised to find uh, some fake paging response messages were accepted by the network. There is no authentication, and the core was successfully built. We think it's quite strange, um, so we started to have a deep look into it. See the two pictures. This is the signaling log on uh, some engineering mode cell phone. In the part of the red, red blocks, uh, you can see the, the left figure. We confirm that in the normal 2G core, authentication does exist 
for every core. You can see here as uh, core component. Here is the um, authentication. Oh, sorry. This this figure is the authentication request and the response. So in normal 2G core, we find AKA does exist for every core. But in the 4G network, in the CS4 back case, the network doesn't require authentication. We found this may be the root of this problem. It was introduced by the CS4 back procedure. Um, this slide shows the signaling flow of CS4 back mobile terminated core procedure. You can see some uh, network elements here. Uh, MME for 4G LT network and MS, MSC for 2G and 3G network. Okay, when there is a core for a UE, for one user terminal, the network firstly sends paging response on the 4G network from MME to UE. And the 4G NOB sends RRC connection release message here. In this message, the network tells the UE which 2G base station it should connect. In this step, uh, there is another vulnerability we presented in last year, that is the LTE redirection attack. Um, this problem is still under discussion in standardization groups, and it hasn't been solved until now. Um, when the UE falls back to 2G, it will send a patient response directly from the UE to MSC. Okay, and from this step to uh, the, the, the core setup, okay, there's no authentication. So um, the whole principle is like, the network has different doors. For example, the left one is the door for LTE, and the right one is the door for GSM. So no matter which door the subscriber wants to enter, the door requires the subscriber to show the badge of this door. And once the badge passes the check, the subscriber enters the network space. And now there's one exception. When subscriber goes out from the door of the LTE, she, he, he shouts, be quick, I have a core in GSM. So in this urgent case, in this special case, the door of GSM does not check his badge. Okay, so after the discovery of this uh, problem, we started to think about how to exploit it. Um, the direct idea is to send fake paging response and then impersonate the victim cell phone and hijack its uh, link. This picture shows our experiment setting. We use the C118 cell phone where Osmond Combi B layer one is running. And the C118 is connected to a laptop which runs Osmond Combi B layer two and three. In this picture, we used two C118 cell phones to improve the attack efficiency. Um, now let's watch a demo video to, to know how the attack looks like, and then we explain the tactical details. This video records the whole attack procedure. Okay. We use two cell phones. One is the victim cell phone. And use, um, whoa. So firstly, we check uh, the two cell phones work, work in the normal mode. 
We firstly use the victim cell phone calls uh, uh, a normal cell phone. Okay, so both of them works normally. Wow. Uh. Okay, so during the, the two calls, we captured the TMSI of the victim cell phone. <coughs> and we start the, the attack. We set the TMSI on this MacBook. Attack this TMSI. This is the victim cell phone's TMSI. So now we call the victim cell phone again. Now the core is connected, but the victim cell phone um, hasn't response. The core is connected to the telephonist. <coughs> uh, next, we opened a Gmail a Google account web page. We try to reset this account's password by entering the cell phone number and the, in, the, the Google account will send a verification short message to the cell phone. The telephone has received this verification short message. Now we import the verification code. Okay, now we can reset the password. Now we create a new password. Signing. Okay, done. This is my Gmail account. <laughs> um, okay, this video was uh, recorded in March in this year. And in this month, July, we, we noticed that um, Google announced uh, its new two-factor authentication scheme. The new scheme delivers the verification code through Google's uh, special application on Android cell phones. So maybe this attack um, does not work to Google now. Okay. Okay, so let my colleague Yu Wei to introduce more technical details. Uh, good morning, I'm Yu Wei. Now let me introduce the first exploitation, the simplest one. The attacker, we name it as Ghost Telephonist can impose, impersonate the victim cell phone to receive the call. The attack steps in our experiment are listed here. The first step is listing the PCH, the paging channel, and secondly, it's a threat that TMC or EMC in the paging messaging. The third step is the case step. 
forging a patient response message with the captured TMC or EMC. After this step, we check whether the network accepts the phishing page response. If it accepts, it will enter the core setup procedure. If not, we will wait for the next paging message. So in this attack, we pick up victim randomly. So we call this method as random hijack. In the random hijack exploitation, the attacker listens on the 2G paging channel. It tries teams from the paging request, and then forge and send the paging response constantly. However, the network standard said the 4G network should send paging requests with STMC, and the STMC has no relation with the 2G TMC. So someone may ask, why would the network send the paging requests on 2G side with the send well, the standard said it should send paging on the 4G side. I don't know either, but in fact, we found that the C18 also received CS4 back paging requests on 2G side. So my guess is the operators configured the network to do so in order to optimize the network to decrease the latency latency or setting up a voice call. <coughs> Here is the success example. You can say the C18 has no SIM card, but after a fake phishing response, we successfully received a call from the number 139. This slide explains the attack signaling. In this figure, UE hyphen V represents the victim. UE hyphen F represents the attacker. When there is the incoming call, for the victim. The MSC in 2G network will request the MME in 4G network to transmit paging request. When the victim receives the paging request, it will send to EMB and extend service request to ask for a CS4 back to accept the incoming call in 2G. In the normal scenario, after fallback, the victim will send the paging response to establish a connection. But in this attacking scenario, because the attacker is constantly sending paging response with the victim's team's number. So the call is taken over by the attacker. Once the telephonist hijacked an incoming call, what can he do in further? The caller will recognize the caller's voice is abnormal, but the attacker may do something like social engineering. For example, he may say, your friend encountered an accident. He is in the hospital. He needs $2,000 from for the rescue co costs. In this scenario, it may generate serious consequences. 
Anyway, now the attacker only know the victim Timothy or Timothy. He don't know who is the victim, and he don't know further information. In what to do for the attacker? Can we know the victim cell phone number? See this picture. We found that during one hijacked call, the telephonist can make a call out to a bad phone by sending CM service request message. And the surprise is this doesn't trigger authentic doesn't trigger an authentication either. The network will directly respond that CM series accept. By this way, we can see the victim's phone number on the screen to this burner phone. We call it as phone number catcher. Here we summarize the attack steps by showing this signaling flow. Telephonics gets the control from here. It sends page in response. Then the network sends back setup. And the call is conf conform confirmed. After the call is hijacked, the telephone is make a call out by sending holding message and then same service request. We can, send, we can see the network side sends back a setup message. It doesn't require authentication. This picture shows the pickup records. Here, we, here are the records captured by Grishak on laptop that awesome is running on. You can see they hold the message to the end of this call. The network does not require authentication. As long as the telephonist doesn't hang up the call, the connection will be maintained. And at the same time, short message can be received or trans transmitted. We try to make a targeted attack to attack a test phone, which gives us the ability to debug and log the signaling. After our investigation, we find two ways to implement a targeted persist persistent hijack. First, we can send the page response back constantly using the test phone team or EMC which we can get easily, no matter whether there is a paging request or not. Or we could use the SDN number, also known as cell phone number. In this case, we know the victim's phone number. We can call the victim and cap capture the vic victim team in the air. Then we can launch a targeted attack we have previously mentioned the attack method. Now let's go on to the next slide and introduce the details about how to implement a targeted hijack. Firstly, we can use TMZ to attack the victim as we discussed. With this attacking method, we could constantly send in page response to the attacking to the network using the victim's team C. Once there is a call to the victim, the call procedure will set up. We can directly take over this procedure because we can respond to paging request, request quicker than the victim. That also means we successfully perform a targeted attack. Secondly, implementing Implement, 
implementing targeted attack with EMC basically require the same steps as using TMC. But this method has some potential disadvantages. The success for rate is much lower than using TMC. Because when the network side receives paging requests with EMC, it, send, it needs time to look up the corresponding TMC in the network. Thus, because the link set, thus increase the link setup latency. But the victim will directly send legal page response with TMC and set up the link quicker than us. While the network is still looking up TMC with our EMC. Finally, when we have the victim's phone number, we can attack the victim in the following way. We need two C118 and one on the phone, as shown in this figure. Here is the steps. Firstly, we set up one C18 as a sniffer. Then we use the banner phone to call the victim and trigger a regular CS fallback procedure. Our sniffer will log the whole procedure, including paging response, call setup, etc. Please notice the call setup signaling contains caller's phone number. That means we can locate the specific call setup signaling and trace back to find the corresponding paging response and finally extract the victim's team C. Now we have our team, our victim's team C. So we can follow the steps we mentioned before to hijack the victim. Now let's watch the demo video. This video shows the targeted attack. We impersonate one victim phone. And uh, furthermore, we can choose the, we can hijack its short message. And uh, we can choose which message the victim can receive. First, we use two phones to call each other to verify the phone number. Then we start a count to see how much time it makes to mount the attack. Yeah, we start a counter to see how much time it takes to mount the attack. Now, we call the victim. But the call have been hijacked.
So now we have successfully hijacked the voice call. Let's go on to a text short message. So we can successfully hijack short message and uh, furthermore, we can choose which short message the victim can receive. So now, welcome my team member, Ling, to introduce a more complex attack. Sorry for the bad video vision. Um, well, let me continue to explain um, the, first, uh, the first demo video show, the whole procedure. Okay. Um, this is about how to attack the internet accounts, and we know that to, to, to simplify the uh, user experience, many internet, internet applications permits login with cell phone number and uh, verification passwords, right? Uh, verification short messages, okay. It doesn't require importing the login password. Um, so if attacker obtains the victim's cell phone number and verification short messages, uh, he can impersonate the victim to access the application. Another attack path is using the verification short message to reset the password as we show in the first uh, demo video. Um, as we all know, there are some existing exploitations um, which can obtain the verification short messages like uh, the attack we showed here. Uh, for example, SS7, SS7 vulnerability can utilize to hijack both core or short messages. And also some malware, malwares on the cell phones which can hijack the short messages content. So uh, telephonist attack is just a new attack uh, method to generate the, the same consequence. Uh, we verify this uh, kind of attack the password reset on some of the internet applications, uh, for example, Facebook and Google account, etc. Uh, the steps are illustrated here. In first step, we control the victim's link and get the phone number. And in step two here, um, we use a computer open the web page um, and request the res to reset the password with the acquired phone number. In the step three here, um, the telephonist receives the verification short messages. And finally, in the step four, we use this verification code to reset the login password. This picture is the screenshot of the c 118s log. And the record, in the red rectangle proves that the C woman I received the verification short messages sent from network. It says CP data network to MS. We investigated the password reset routine um, of the many popular websites and applications. Uh, including global and uh, Chinese ones. Uh, this table summarized some of them. Uh, Facebook, Google account, WhatsApp, and in China, there are Alipay, WeChat, Didi and Sina, etc. Some of them require sending short message from internet to cell phone, the inbound ones. And some of them require sending short message from cell phone to internet, the outbound ones. Well, um, 
Now, you, you, may, you may think oh, this vulnerability is so dangerous, and, but, but we want to emphasize that uh, don't worry so much. Um, there are some constraints, okay? In this page, we summarize the constraints to launch the attack. Um, firstly, the telephonist and the victim cell phone should be in the same paging area. It may be several base stations coverage. And secondly, the attack is feasible only one 2G network is in use and uses A51 or A50 encryption. Um, I, I want to uh, say here, 2G network is in use. That means even the CS4 back makes the cell phone fall back to 3G. Okay. Um, as long as 2G network is in use, the attack is feasible. Okay. And um, compared with other known exploitations, telephonist attack has uh, these features. It doesn't need uh, to access the SS7 core network, and this attack doesn't need fake base station, so it's quite easy to launch. The victim keeps online in 4G network and is not aware of this attack, as the pictures shown here. Um, people may also question that why in every experiment you make a call to the victim to trigger uh, the CS4 back. Is this necessary for a successful hijack? The answer is no. Uh, it depends on the operator's configuration. In some cases, we found we can directly impersonate the victim cell phone to make a mobile originated, originated core. Um, during our tests, we noticed that uh, we got different successful um, results when we uh, attacked uh, different victim, victim cell phones. Here lists the five cell phones we tested. Um, with different chipsets, it is strange that some of them, um, which we marked with a star in the table, will get back its control to the connection. And, after 10 seconds of our successful hijack. This means our attack is failed in this case. So what's the problem? Why does such kind of failure exist? Mm, why do different cell phones have different behavior? Here we want to, uh, after we, we, we tested and analyzed, the major reason we found causing this issue is the fast return, fast return procedure. Um, the chip set manufacturers implement fast return in different ways. When a victim cell phone received a patent message, but it didn't receive this call, uh, it may launch a location area update procedure in 2G, and this action will finally lead the interruption of our hijack link. Here we show uh, two cases. The first one is about Qualcomm, Qualcomm chipset. In this figure, the green taxes are 4G signaling and the white taxes are 2G signaling. You can see that Qualcomm chipset sends location update request here. But there is no location update accept following. So we doubt whether the chipset uh, really complete the location update request procedure. So in this case, the attack will, uh, will be succeed because the LAU procedure is not complete. So we can maintain the connection to do something evil. Here's the uh, failure example. We can see the difference. This is a case of MTK chipset. When the cell phone fell back to 2G, it didn't get its core. Mm. But before returning to 4G, the signaling was sent out. There is a location update accept immediately following. So in this case, our, our victim will get uh, a new team C. That's why the connection will be interrupted 10 seconds after being successfully hijacked. 
Okay, does this mean the chipset we marked as star are all immune to, to this attack? No, for such chipset issue, we can use the jamming to uh, prevent the victim cell from sending LAU signaling to the network. Then uh, we could maintain this hijacked link. Okay, we propose the counter visuals to operators and internet uh, providers. We suggest to, to add the CS4 backer authentication in the CS4 backer uh, procedure. The additional latency is acceptable, and we think the final solution is to speed up the VOLTE deployment. And for the internet service provider, and it should be careful that the PSTN authentication is not safe, and IST guidance already suggested that uh, not use PSTN in two-factor authentication. Well, finally, I want to thanks to GSMA CVD program. Um, this is a new program launched in this year. Um, this is a program for, for researchers to report the vulnerability related to standard and protocols. So before this program, um, we have no good platform to, to report such uh, vulnerabilities. So um, we reported this problem to GSMA, and we received the first acknowledgement on the Mobile Security Research Hall of Fame. GSMA also transferred this vulnerability information to every operators, and we know um, some related operators are already fixed and or fixing this problem. Ah, well, that's all. Thank you all for your attention.